Oh. <laughs> um. Let's try this. Greetings, traveller, and welcome to my voyage of discovery into the land of Modular. Simply put, it's time for Get Jervis to Get Modular. I'm Jason Jervis. Join me as I discover what Modular is and what it can do. So, what makes this feature different from anything else? Well, here's the thing. I am ever so slightly daunted by Modular. The wealth of unusual sounding modules, the patching possibilities alone are enough to make me break out in a cold sweat. So I'll be asking all those dumb questions that everyone else is too afraid to ask. Let me be your idiot's guide to Modular and we'll have some fun along the way, I promise. Having grown up listening to Vangelis, Jean-Michel Jarre, I quickly found Tangerine Dream, which led me to Wendy Carlos, Tamita, Tonto's Expanding Headband, and Emerson Lake and Palmer, albeit Emerson alone, really. So, music predominantly featuring glorious room-sized synthesizers known as Modular. So, my story begins in the late 80s with me and a Poly 800 in a bedroom. And slowly but surely, I built my collection of synthesizers. By the mid to late 90s, software and analog modeling created a virtual playground. Native Instruments Reactor, then known as Generator, was my first modular experience, followed closely by the Nord Micromodular, which was a DSP device. And then to Arturia, and I finally got my hands on a Moog Modular and the ARP 2600, which allowed me to experience modular without the expense. Having seen the birth of the Eurorack by Dieter Dopfer and being all too aware of the fabulous A100, I started wanting the real thing. The UK distribution was local to me so I could go down and marvel at its brushed steel goodness and dream of one day being able to afford one. I did acquire my first semi-modular vintage synth at the time, which was an MS-10, although it barely scratched the itch. Recently, I have scratched the itch further with a Pittsburgh Modular Microvolt 3900 but it's definitely time to dive in. Oh my God, what has happened to Dieter's Eurorack format? It's exploded massively. Modules with the most obscure sounding names, bizarre functions, formats, the things that I don't understand. Um, the basic oscillator, envelope, mixer, filter, uh, amplifier modules are still available, and I've got a couple here, but there are so many other things. I mean, splitters, variants, devices where you can do so many weird and wonderful things that I don't fully understand. So I'm hoping to build my first rack and within that discover the basics and from there take you with me to find out the more esoteric stuff. So as you can see on the table now we have got some semi-modular goodness here. Uh, the Bearing a Neutron, which is a fully functioning synth uh, without patching, uh, is only 299 euros. So it's incredibly affordable for anybody who wants to tip into the Eurorack world. It's also Eurorackable. I'll repeat that, Eurorackable, which means you can get it out of its desktop case and put it into a Eurorack. So for 299 euros, you can get yourself on board and, uh, and have fun with it. And if, you, if it's not for you, you've got a great sounding synth with some patching possibilities. Up from there, you've got the Arturia uh, Mini Brute 2, which is a, there's a keyboard version with the 2, and the 2S has a sequencer. Again, the beauty of this is that it has its own 3U and 6U rack uh, bays, so you can actually build on top of this into a very, very gorgeous looking finished products. Although I don't think Eurorack's ever a finished product, is it? Maybe you can tell me in the comments below if you think it is. So on top of that, uh, you've got the sequences, which has the possibility of doing uh, parameter sequencing as well. So you can patch and have, I think there's four channels of sequencing available here. So pitch, gate, and two channels which are available for parameter sequencing, which is really cool. So that's going to be our basis for this series is this beauty here. Because we can sequence, we can play it, we can patch it internally, we can also bring out of the module into this and expand the sonic capabilities of this synth. Um, I've also got a Pittsburgh Modular 
life forms on the table too, which is also a fabulous semi-modular synth, which is also rack mountable uh, and available as a desktop, which again, you can put it in. So these are options that you have to take you into the world of Eurorack. Okay, so let's kick this off with me trying my best to patch this and make some sounds that make sense. I hope that I can do it. However, to throw a complete spanner at my head, I'm gonna introduce a little wild card. And the wild card is this rather fabulous system by Make Noise, where none of the modules make any sense to me whatsoever. So I'm gonna try my best to get some sensible sounds out of this. Let's have a go. I got some noise out of it. Um, that was kind of interesting. I got lost a few times, but uh, yeah, that was definitely very satisfying indeed. Uh, I hope that came across because uh, I had a lot of fun there. I really did. Um, okay, so step one was this. Let's open Pandora's box and let's see what Make Noise has to offer. Oh, <laughs> um, Let's try this. Uh, triangle? Saw? No, it's got some effects, I can see that. So let's root that, because who doesn't like, like effects? And let's face it, effects make everything sound better. Uh, so, mix, in, out, oh, so even the simplest things on this defy the logic I know. I think the button, oh, right, so I see loads of people using the make noise control module, so let's, let's try it. <laughs> what was that? Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I did manage to make sound with the Make Noise box of delights, Pandora's box of rather deliciously built, uh, wonderfully assembled, and to my eyes, complete unknown. Um, so I'm very happy to have done that. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the first installment of my modular series. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification button so that you know when the next episode is coming out. And I'll see you in the next one.